So what's your world like, Christian? My world is a lot like um, the internet. What do you mean? I mean, there's a lot of different websites, and um, people can communicate with each other through them. That's interesting. Uh, what other things are in your world? There are a lot of different kinds of people, and um, they all have their own opinions. That sounds like, uh, interesting. What do they do? They talk to each other, and um, sometimes they argue. That sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, what else is in your world? There's a lot of different kinds of music, and um, people can listen to it on the internet. That sounds great. What do you think of the internet? I think it's amazing. It's um, changed the way people communicate. I agree. It's a great way to um, stay connected with people. What do you think of the web? I think it's amazing too. It's um, a great way to find information. I agree. It is a great way to find um, information about anything you're interested in. What do you think of Comic Sans? I think it's um, a bit too casual for serious documents. I agree. I think it's um, better for informal communications. What do you think of coffee? I think it's um, a great way to stay awake. I agree. I think it's um, a great way to um, wake up in the morning. Do you have any other thoughts about your world? I think um, it's a great place to live. Cheers to that. Cheers. With my Invisi juice. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Welcome, everyone, to the podcast with the specific letter, the 11th letter. The 11th the letter, K. Unicode, uh, se what, 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 ASCII code 75 and 107. Yes. yes. Depending on caps lock, you know? Exactly. Yes. Um, we're back with We're podcasts friends. with a K. We're back. It has been like six months. Maybe since seven. We've done this. Yeah. Ah! What are we doing? Uh, we're getting a new house and living uh, and That's figuring stuff correct. out. <laughs> In fact, uh, we are uh, roommates now. We this live together. This is true. Other. We're actually right. Oh, wait. You're up there. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> He's down there. He's actually right there. I can hear a muffle of you. <laughs> oh. I wonder if that came through my mic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so welcome back. <coughs> um, we have to we have to mention obviously for people who are new here that whole bit at the beginning was GPT three. Yes. Thank you, weird neural networks, for generating an awesome intro to our podcast. Yes, thank you for uh, coming on our podcast yet again. GPT three, we'll have to talk to you sometime and just thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In person. May, uh, maybe with Luna at some point. Um, we can have a, an intimate conversation. Live. Have another conversation with Luna. Yeah, we yeah. should have her on again for oh, sure. For sure, for sure. <clears throat> uh, well, we, what? we have something very, very exciting. We do. That we have never, ever shown anything like on the podcast before. This is true. And it's something that you can have yourself. Soon. Maybe with by the next Soon. podcast. Soon. You gotta get it set up. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know our third segment on this podcast, of every podcast? is What's Your World, the time where we come up with our own world, on our own, improv, out of nowhere, and describe it in vivid detail. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, What's Your World, the book, the movie, the podcast in ink. Look at that. Look at that. That is a straight up book right there. So Christian made this book. <clears throat> that was straight up. This is Christian's work. This is months of Christian's work. He made this as a gift to me, uh, which was amazing. Yeah. Uh, and it, it has plenty of things to uh, catch your interest and get you to give us money, your money. Please. If we ever start a Patreon, maybe we can have like the video of like the reveal when you mm. open the gift on the patreon so only people with that uh, that have access to it can that's watch. a good idea <laughs> i was left speechless uh <laughs> yeah so christian <clears throat> how'd you make this 
Um, so yeah, I got the transcripts from our episodes and I manually edited them so that they could be human readable because some of them were not like, and they spelled my name wrong. Um, uh, and, oh, and your name wrong too. Sometimes Steven with a PH is heresy. <laughs> That's not um, a name. it's not a name. It's step head. Not a real name. Um, Sorry. and then me and a select few of my friends worked on illustrating each of the episodes and each of the worlds rather um so yeah check this out this is my personal favorite illustration this is from a world called communication cords i can't tell you the podcast number but if you go uh, back a page or two you should be able to see Wait. there it is you uh -huh. can see it pretty well there yes it's a beautiful illustration this is done by christian himself <clears throat> Uh, no, that one wasn't. Oh, this is Pan. This is Pan. Pan. Yeah. This is my sibling. Sorry. Yes. Uh, there's a lot done by Christian, a lot done by Pan, mm -hmm. uh, who's my sibling. There's some done by Dietrich's brother, Dietrich, and his sister. Uh, episode six. This is episode six. Yes. Episode six, Communication Chords. It was my world. And yes. then Pan um, illustrated it. And then this is... You picked my favorite illustration, um, so I'm going to pick probably one of my other favorites. It's so hard to pick, um, mm -hmm. but this is one done by Dietrich, my brother, and this was my world that I came up with in, um, I believe, episode 11. And I'll try to get here. I think I have to have my face in the screen. Yeah. So, but this is Flub the Cosmic Drummer. So, oh, yeah. It's cool stuff. <clears throat> Such a good one. Dietrich comments on how he couldn't tell it was GPT or intro. Yeah, GPT is terrifying. Actually, yes, this is um, rare. Right, right, right. Yes. So it's actually terrifying because we spent way too long trying to get a good intro because they were too accurate. We were like, this is boring. This is just podcast words. Yeah. This is an actual transcript. I'm reading what we're about to say later. <laughs> and it was just like boring. It didn't yeah. even sound interesting. So we had to like, we had to go back to an earlier version of GPT-3 and like mess, like turn up the randomness, crank it. Yep. It was insane. And add um, coffee into the discussion so that it would actually. Add coffee, <laughs> we called things. It, it was avant. We added avant garde, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, goofy. Like we had so many key words to try and get it to be weird. It took a lot of work. So yeah, that's that's this book. Uh, hopefully, you know, if you're interested and you want to get it, uh, we will hopefully have it available sometime soon. Yeah, that is the plan. Hell yeah. Oh. And now, Christian, it's been so long since yes. we talked. It actually hasn't because we tried to do this podcast and it didn't record my audio this and we are true. restarting it. We are. But I don't care. It has been a long time since we actually had a discussion and went through this is the true. podcast. I'm excited. So, our topic for today is right and gentlemen, on the screen below you. Right there. Yes. Why you don't is, you see my finger? That's so weird. Is Web3 the next best web? And to answer that question, we actually have to preface and kind of define some things so we can actually answer the question and then talk about some adjacent topics that are also very important. Um, so we're going to start with the history of the web. And as we know it, the web, the internet, it's a bunch of connected devices. Um, back back when the internet was, was a wee bab, um, it was a bunch of small static servers. So people would host like an individual website, just some HTML, maybe some other types of documents, um, but it was all static and, and, and locally hosted, typically for organizations, and then- uh, Generally, you know, just, to, just to give a visual aid, that looks a little bit something like this. Uh, except all the things that are moving, ba yeah. mostly basic HTML, text yeah. and links. So uh, basic wikis, basic blogs that are just mm -hmm. static, um, you're not interacting with too much except the page itself, images, that kind of stuff. Um, and then in like the, two, like by around 2004, there's this big boom um, and the, the internet got popular. A bunch of people created services and stuff. So the web came, became more of a platform, more of a system as a service. Um, and they were larger centralized platforms that would distribute content and it would be more dynamic. And that's kind of where we're at. We're on the verge of maybe <laughs> something new. Um, something new and um, yeah so that brings us to the question of what is web 3 
Um, we have a couple definitions just to clear some things up. Let me... There was a web one and web two. Did you specify what web one and web two were? Right. So web one is like that static, that old like 1990s static website that would mm -hmm. be hosted typically locally, but it could be accessed on the internet. Generally, it's just information. Yeah. You know, it's not really interactive. Yeah. yeah. Web um, two. Web two is this system as a service kind of a platform. It's they're more centralized, larger businesses that are distributing content, allowing yeah, like connection YouTube, between people. Like YouTube, Facebook. This yeah. is a service. I'm not going to show you my recommendations. <laughs> okay. Um, and now we're getting to this question of Web three. And if you go into the Wikipedia, it's um, it has a couple different things up. that it talks about. Um, but you'll see that the big thing is the definition by Ethereum co-founder Galvin Wood or Gavin Wood, um, which is about cryptocurrencies and using that as kind of like the the basis for the next version of the web. Um, web three has also before that became kind of this buzzword um, was used to describe the thing this thing called the semantic web, which is an effort to put more. Um, an effort to put more com computer readable content on the web. So metadata that like describes connections between sites and different aspects of the web so that um, it would be more computer friendly to parse it. Um, and then we kind of get to the, this concept of the decentralized web, which we'll talk about a little bit more detail later, but let's get to the buzzword web three, which is focused on blockchain. Um, yes. So, do you want to start with defining? Well, I guess I don't know. We can kind of define Web three, and then you have a thesis that you want to. <clears throat> yeah, I want to state. sort of set out my thoughts. Uh, so, Web three is a it's a it's a movement and an idea, uh, which is basically this passion a lot of people have, and this this concept that all the entire internet is going through is going towards this where internet services are going to be one, decentralized, and two, they're going to, at a basic level, rely or depend on cryptocurrency, specifically. Yeah. Uh, cryptocurrency being things like Bitcoin, Ethereum, you've probably heard of Bitcoin, um, and these are intimately related with NFTs too, which I'll, I'd like to talk about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but my my thesis for today that I present to you is that the Web3 movement, as it is, as they are pushing it, pushing Bitcoin and Ethereum as it is, is unethical. And it is not nearly as exciting as the other decentralized stuff that's going on right now that is not Web3, but has so many things to offer you and so many things to enhance just straight up living in this modern digital age, if you like the services that are already available to you, like YouTube and Instagram and Twitter. Mm -hmm. So there are exciting things happening and they're not Web3 and that's that's my other point. All right, so we've got your thesis. Let's talk a little bit about blockchain technology, right? So when we talk about blockchain, we are talking about a decentralized um, service kind of. Um, we have a bunch of different computers that are communicating with one another and they agree on this ledger, which is a list of transactions. Um, and sometimes there's data incorporated in that. And the most popular blockchains, which would be well, the ones you mentioned, Bitcoin and Ethereum, um, use, uh, what is it, proof of work? Proof of work. Right, which is basically Trust. the computers are hashing and figuring out what this hash is and is using a lot of computing power and then they once they get it right then they submit it to the to the ledger and then they get some sort of payout from it and it's it's solidified there and the benefits of this are that um, it provides anonymity to uh, like privacy um, to individuals who are doing transactions there's downsides right. to that which we'll get to in a second um, and uh, and it's decentralized, so you're not relying on like a single organization, like a government or um, a single company, uh, as the backbone of, of your transactions. So right. th those are kind of the two primary benefits to the structure of the blockchain. Mm -hmm. um, anonymous and decentralized. Yes, yeah, anonymous and decentralized. And then um, we're going to talk about what's not great about it. So why don't you start yep. with the environment? Sure. Yeah. So blockchain. This is by far the biggest. Um, argument against the current, the biggest cryptocurrencies, uh, they require 
the way they work is that in order for the blockchain to work, in order for Bitcoin and Ethereum to work, people have to be mining it, which basically means they are running computers on a, an algorithm that is really, really hard to do. That's what they're doing. And you need a lot of computing power for it. So that's energy, time, and you need a lot of, if you want to do it, if you want to be very prolific in it, you have to buy a lot of computing machinery. You have to buy a lot of chips. You have to buy a lot of GPUs and stuff to run those things. So here's the problem is that it's not like it's, you can't just say it is hard to mine Bitcoin. Like there's a level of difficulty that is hard to reach. And like, if you reach that, then you can mine Bitcoin. That's not what it's like. What it's like is that Bitcoin mining maximizes your energy usage. Like you are incentivized to maximize the amount of energy you can use and maximize the amount of chips you buy and maximize every kind of thing that could contribute to waste and damaging the environment. So we are an incredibly, incredibly power hungry society globally right now. Uh, and it's just been increasing over, over the years. And part of that destroys the environment Part of it is just not really, um, it's not really sustainable at all in terms of our demands, what uh, the technologies we have right now. And in 60 years, like if we don't have a huge breakthrough in technology, like we're, the world is, is that your phone? Okay. Uh, no, that's, the, that's, that's my normal alarm. That's not for this. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, if we don't have a huge breakthrough in energy technology, uh, we are ruining our world very quickly. Uh, so that is what I find fundamentally unethical about the big cryptocurrencies as they are now. Right, but like I guess there's two things right about that. Is one is if there was a good reason to outweigh that huge cost, then may, then it might become worth it, right? But as we're seeing, it's like it provides privacy and it provides the decentralized aspect. But what is the big kind of benefit to it, to society? Like, what is the big benefit to society from these blockchain technologies? From blockchain? Yeah. So there are benefits for sure. Um, so Bitcoin, for instance, just Bitcoin alone, uh, it is an anonymous way to buy things. So people in, who need to purchase things but cannot do so in a safe way due to um, if somebody can track their, uh, their purchases or anything like that, if they don't want the government finding out, they can do it anonymously. Mm -hmm. This is good and bad. A lot of people want this because they believe that privacy, like absolute privacy is a right and they want to fight for that value. But the thing is, is that the vast, vast majority of money that runs through Bitcoin and is used in these anonymous transactions is money spent on illegal things. Is money sp not just illegal, but unethical things. You're gonna buy guns with it. You're gonna buy malware with it. You're gonna buy, uh, if somebody found a bug in a huge piece of software and they wanna sell you that bug so you can do bad things with it, they're gonna use Bitcoin to sell it to you because it's anonymous. Right. It kind That's of suffers some of the same things that torrents suffer from uh, in that decentralized nature. And we'll, we'll get to torrents a little bit later. Um, but yeah, so I guess the question is, since it has such a, an extreme impact on the environment, is like, do the goods outweigh the bads, right? And I guess what your argument is that they don't. Um, they don't as they are. Right. And here's the other thing is that they don't have to ruin the environment. True. And there are technologies that are that are made to try to count, combat that aspect of the blockchain, right? So there Ethereum 3.0, we were just looking up, um, mm -hmm. uses proof of stake instead of proof of work. Proof of stake, yes. And um, that has, it's a different mechanism. It's not focused on the computational aspect as much, um, but there are, there's some, there's some oddities to it, but we were kind of thinking about it and it, it probably is better overall. Yeah, so proof of stake does not require a huge amount of processing power at all. Uh, actually, all you do is, all it is, is given that you have coins, the number of coins you have, um, I'm not sure if it's the number of coins, I think it's the number of coins, but basically it puts you in a lottery for getting another coin. 
and it's random. Mm -hmm. You do not have to do a bunch of intensive calculation, but as long as you are what is called a validator, basically someone who is helping run the blockchain to keep it working, uh, you were put in a lottery to get free money, essentially. Uh, that's how it works. And it does not, like, it's so, like, more orders of magnitude less impactful in your environment. Mm -hmm. It's basically not. Uh, it's really good. And there are some downsides, I'll admit. Um, there are potential downsides right. that I think we would have to mitigate. For instance, uh, there is a potential for... 51% of the coins to be bought by a, like a single party. And if that were to be the case, that party would be able to control the records of the transactions. Right. They'd be able to alter them. Um, there, There's a whole discussion to be had there, but let me just point this out that it is extremely unlikely for something like that to happen because you are spending billions of dollars in order to ruin the coin. Mm -hmm. You're, you're literally throwing away billions of dollars in order to have a coin that doesn't do anything that no one wants to use anymore. So there's not much incentive to do that. Right. So from that perspective, it, like if, if the majority of blockchain technologies were to use this proof of stake as opposed to the proof of work model, then it would pro it, it, it allows it to be more of what it's used for right like it's not as a super official thing right now it uh, it seems like a lot of millionaires and rich people are kind of investing in it it's something that's a hot topic it seems more like a toy maybe um it doesn't have a lot of professional uses like i mean people are trading it like it's stock um but if it were on that that um proof of stake model then you might you'd be okay with with that right yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, I have no, I have nothing against cryptocurrency. Yeah. What I have against it is the blockchain technology that is un, very unnecessarily impacting the environment for right. no good reason. And, like, people who have that computing could be putting it towards better uses, right? Like, they could be... And not only that, it, but it comes down to the fact that we globally are incredibly, incredibly wasteful, mm -hmm. uh, including... Well, yeah, better uses to, would be an example of, of being not wasteful with what we have, right? And what we exactly. can do, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, there's so many chips. Like, there's a chip shortage. But there's so many chips that do not have to be thrown at mining Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. It could be used for other things. It could be used to help people. Mm -hmm. You know, there are more important things than just making some bucks. Yeah, they could be used as like a node on a network that's doing something for cancer research or, you know, yeah. protein folding or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. And that would also be decentralized. Um, and we'll get to some other decentralized things, too. Um, we wanted to talk about NFTs a little yeah, bit. Yeah, the relationship. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's NFTs and cryptocurrency are intimately linked. They are, you cannot have NFTs without cryptocurrency. First off, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. NFTs, as they were originally created, were made with the Ethereum cryptocurrency. Uh, NFTs, you, there's so much hype around them as of recently, and there's also a lot of hate about them, by the way. Yeah. On Twitter and YouTube, if I, you look up NFTs, it's I a think lot it's of hate. important to just note that the whole topic of blockchain and NFT, just like separately and together is very polarizing in what you find in people's um, views yes. of it. Very, 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 very. So here's an example of a NFT uh, collection. These are th 10,000 uniquely generated characters. No two are exactly alike. Each one of them can be officially owned by a single person on the Ethereum blockchain. Cool, right? Well, here's the problem, is that NFTs has, have the exact same problem as... Uh, cryptocurrency that uses proof of work blockchain. Mm -hmm. They are very bad for the environment. And the gross thing about, see, if a couple people were using these, whatever. But the gross thing about it is how hard companies and like millionaires are pushing for these things. Like Twitter wants to add them to their website. That's so many people who are going to be incentivized to use this system that is terrible for the environment. There are game companies that want to, that are investing in this and want to push for NFTs to be included in their games. And we know that gamers can spend a lot of money on games. 
It's... There's an interesting aspect to the gaming side of things, too. I didn't mention this when we were recording last time, but mm -hmm. um, there are... They're using... Vid there are some video games out there where the players actually make money from playing the game. So, like, the currency in the game isn't just like, oh, you bought a Clash of Clans gem with US dollars. It's an actual mm -hmm. blockchain money. So it has mm -hmm. some value in the world, which makes it weird, um, but it's interesting that you could play a game and have value in the actual world. Yeah, um, that's super weird, but so, it's interesting. Yeah, so that's that's a concept that would be interesting to play with. And then obviously I think you would like be like, well, if we did it on the the proof of stake, it would be a better experiment. Right. Um, it's like it's okay to have these like there's nothing inherently unethical about these systems yeah. if they're not impacting the environment. Uh, of course, even if we switch to proof of stake work, excuse me, another big ethical issue with cryptocurrency is that it just it is a breeding ground for scammers, pyramid schemes, um, people who just encourage a bunch of people to, um, you know, pump up a coin and then sell everything. Like it is ripe for that. And given that it's anonymous too, phishing scams are everywhere. There are many, many people who have lost tons of money who mm -hmm. have just one day they clicked on a link and they logged in and they didn't know it was a scam and they lost all their NFTs. And it's like, oh no, you can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's actually vastly less secure in some ways than something like USAA or some other bank where you have a, uh, like you have insurance. A with central the bank. authority, yeah. Right. They, they know that they're on the line, they're responsible. They beef up their security because if you lose money, they have to pay you back a certain amount mm -hmm. yeah. if you're scammed or somebody breaks in. But cryptocurrency does not have that at all. So you make one wrong mistake, you can literally lose all of your money. Yeah. Also, like you, you just made me think that, like, if you look, if you compare the blockchain to like a stock market, um, or the cryptocurrencies to a stock market, it's very different because you can, in a stock market, you can kind of point to the people. It's not anonymous. Mm -hmm, um, you mm -hmm. have to like register for an account and you know that kind of stuff. So they could they can be like, oh, these people are the ones that are trying to short the stock or whatever right. and then you can get into trouble with whatever government the stock is based on um, or a group of people in the case of GameStop <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah true um, and whereas with the um, privacy of the blockchain you can't really point back to the people who caused the problem not at all yeah they get off scot-free mm -hmm. practically every time there's only one instance I've heard of where they did not and that was some creepy BS with the government where they somehow got into their Bitcoin wallet hmm. and they never released how. But they stole millions of dollars um, by using ransomware and they got it back or a lot of it back. Hmm. I think the FBI or CIA did. Interesting. Um, but generally, you like it's basically impossible. You can't do anything about it. Yeah. There's no recourse whatsoever. So if you like... That's the that's the weird part about these cryptocurrencies is that large like millionaires, billionaires, large organizations make it sound like this is going to be the currency of the future when there are huge, huge, huge uh, disadvantages to it that they don't talk about. Right. There are advantages and we could use it for the purpose of anonymity and um, decentralization. Mm -hmm. But there is no. In my mind, there's no good reason to have this be the main currency in any way, or even to rival something like the U.S. dollar. Sure. Because there's so many systems in place that protect us that we don't even know about, that we don't even pay attention to, and you have none of that with cryptocurrency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So honestly, I love the idea as much as the next guy, and like I would have, I would use cryptocurrency if it didn't negatively impact the environment, um, to do certain things, maybe. Yeah. But otherwise, there's no good reason. But I do let me let me point out that there are cryptocurrencies that do not negatively impact the environment. People have already created many cryptocurrencies that use proof of stake. Ethereum is moving to it, for instance. Mm -hmm. Ethereum 3.0. The the founders talk about um, like proof of stake, and that's essentially no carbon print footprint, very little, which is great. In my mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like I guess I don't know. One of the one of the big things about this is 
it's kind of a worldwide experiment like mm -hmm. it was it was a concept it was an idea that was coded up and created and then put out there and then now it's just running and it's right. not going to stop on its own people are going to keep <laughs> using it um maybe there'll be some efforts to transition to some other currency that's more um ecological um right. i mean ethereum's huge and it's shifting to yeah. proof of stake it sounds like so the, yeah the question i guess would be is can they train i don't know they, i haven't looked this up but can they transition their the ledger to this new model or do they have to just basically yeah, everyone that. needs to move together yeah essentially mm -hmm. all the miners have to shift yeah. yeah, and some people won't want to do that right. because they don't get incentivized to use all this hardware they've bought. So they'll probably stick with Bitcoin, or they'll just try and keep the old Ethereum alive. Mm -hmm. And so we we will likely see some some contention between those two. Right. Mm -hmm. We've well, been yeah. talking a lot about cryptocurrency and Web three, mm -hmm. when there are much more exciting things in my mind. Yeah. So to talk about the, you know specifically, we were talking about decentralization of cryptocurrency in Web three and yes. how that processing is is separated, and then they kind of come up with a single ledger that they all agree on. Um, right. But there are other kinds of decentralization that we want to talk about. Um, we're going to talk about a couple things here, um, but let's get into like social media, right? So mm -hmm. our current model of social media in Web two point oh, we have centralized. Uh, locations we got like Facebook, we've got Instagram, we've got Twitter, we've got YouTube. These big corporations that host all their data on servers and whatnot, and they are the arbiter. They give you the information that you search for. It all goes through their service. Um, and what's interesting about these is <laughs> working on Web Six. Nice. Um, uh, that's not the other. That's still not the same timer. Um, all good. What is interesting about these, right, is that everyone in the entire world can access everyone in the entire world and it's all just scrolling by right on the main page um and it's yep. not you know it's people aren't meant to comprehend the entire world's problems and that's another conversation uh we're, we're built as communal creatures who are you know made for smaller communities um and what's interesting is that there's a decentralized version of the social media platforms which you'll talk about like mastodon in a second Mm -hmm. um, I do want to also just mention that there are social media that are built off of the blockchain, which is another topic. Um, but there's like, I don't remember what it's called. I think it's called deep D tube or, so, or deep tube or something. And then there's like steam it, um, which is like a, an Instagram blog kind of thing, which mm -hmm. is built on the blockchain. So likes actually equate to coins and you can cash right. out from that. I've heard um, of that. But anyways, that's a separate conversation. We want to talk about this other kind of decentralization communities. Okay. Mastodon. What is Mastodon? Mastodon. Mastodon, Mastodon. is a dinosaur. Believe Ooh. it or not, uh, that is their that is the mascot for a peculiar decentralized service that very much mimics Twitter. It's it's quite similar, but it is decentralized in a fascinating way. Mm -hmm. Here's Mastodon. I, uh, well, there's no one web page for Mastodon, but and that's what's uh, important. That is not a. I don't know what that was. <laughs> that was literally that was like a band or something. Why is that the first thing that comes up? <laughs> anyway, here's Mastodon's website. Social networking back in your hands. Mastodon is a decentralized service that allows you to do microblogging and stuff like that. Um, now that doesn't sound. That's like why would I use that? You know, it's like it's just Twitter again. You know, I can just stay on Twitter. But Mastodon is. Not, not only is it not the only service that I'm about to talk about, but it is also, it also lends itself to community. Far better, in my opinion, than something like Twitter. Mm -hmm. So how Mastodon works is that an individual, I could do it, you could do it, an individual makes a Mastodon instance on their own server, on their own computer, and other people are allowed to join that. Basically, you become Google. You, you have your own server that you set up. People can connect to you and make an account there. And there are many, many, many of these instances. And what that allows you to do is you can go find this guy who hosts this instance, talk to him, find out that this instance is about interests that are similar to yours, and make an account on his instance. What that allows you to do is talk to this much more close-knit group of people who already, generally speaking, have something in common and have similar interests. 
But what's crazy about Mastodon is that not only does it allow you to congregate into these small communities, it doesn't just shut you out for the rest of the world, not at all. Actually, you have access to a huge portion of other Mastodon instances because Mastodon does something called Federation. And this brings me to the Fediverse. Mm -hmm. The Fediverse is crazy. Fediverse. Fediverse. Okay, here are a bunch of different services that are on something called the Fediverse. Here's Mastodon, it's just one of these services. You have some called, yeah, you know, there's PeerTube. This is a competitor to YouTube, and it's quite good, by the way. Your new social, another social media one. Pleroma is a lot, you know, PixelFed is a lot like Instagram. Mm. So what these can do is they can interconnect and connect with each other in a really cool way. So say I'm on my Mastodon instance, which has to do with old tech and stuff. Somebody can follow somebody on a completely different Mastodon instance, and they can get their posts from this other server. Now, they don't get the entire world's post in their timeline. They get this one guy. And what that allows those two servers to do now is federate, which allows you to see a federated timeline showing the timeline of both servers. So, it's so like, now you have connected it's like two, two servers. communities that are connected as opposed right. to the whole internet or a couple communities. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So you've connected to one other server and anyone who's following other people from other servers, those servers will also get interconnected. So you sort of create this web outwards based on individual people's interests and who they've followed uh, that allows you to not only be in your community and have a small number of people who you can actually get to know on a personal level, but you can also branch out, go to the, visit the federated timeline. And it, it, it's actually really fascinating to sit there and watch the world scroll by. If you're on an instance that's connected to a lot of other instances, you are, it's not, there's no algorithm. You are just watching real time what people are posting. It's like, oh, that guy's outside. Oh, that guy likes watering plants. Oh, this guy's a freaking dev at Google. <laughs> oh, there's Elon Musk. You know, I don't know. I don't sure, think Elon yeah. Musk is on there. But oh, it's just, it's it's everyone. And it's it's truly decentralized. And what it doesn't do is something like Twitter, where it algorithmically designs itself to capture your attention as much as humanly possible. Right. The so code is open source. The difference, it doesn't do that. The difference between, or there's a lot of differences, but you know, one of the differences between this Fediverse and the centralized 2.0 social media platform is the the draw, right? So the focus on this Fediverse is communities. We're creating right. a community. It's me and my friends. We're all interested mm -hmm. in the same topic. Everyone's um, there because they want to be there. Everybody's there, yeah, because they want to be there. And they know the people around them. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas in like these public social medias, um, they are there for the algorithm. They're trying to get more people into their platform um, and people are fed the content that they want to see, right? They, mm -hmm. they get more of what they want to see. Their communities might exist in the things that they want to see, but then there's also the, like, the aspect of, oh, th what gets people on the platform is they're fighting each other, they're arguing. So then- Yep, um, drama. It's, yeah, it, it, it lends itself to drama. Um, and it's not necessarily the best ends of the internet. You know, everybody talks about Twitter being a shit show. <laughs> um, so every single time I go on there, yeah. I am reminded of that fact. Honestly, my Twitter, I don't use it anymore. Like maybe once in a blue moon, I'll open it is pretty good, but mm -hmm. I'm following very specific people like right. some game designers and some like, um, I don't know, film designers that are like have interesting content. So, but yeah, it's a very different side of Twitter than <laughs> what... The majority of people see um, i mean just scroll through one of the uh trending topics oh, yeah, and course. go into the comments uh wear a hazmat suit put them put like three masks on uh if you have them just do everything you can to protect yourself because it's very toxic yeah um so it's it's the the intention behind it is fundamentally different mm-hmm the intention behind Twitter's algorithm and how it works and what they want is for you to be a captive audience member. Right. They're literally capturing your attention with ev in every way they know how in order to keep you there for longer and get you distracted by it. But, oh, I'm bored. I'm going to scroll through Twitter. 
how many times have you tried to do some work? Now, I'm, I don't scroll through Twitter. I'm, my my um, poison is Reddit. But how many times have you tried to do work and you're bored and you end up scrolling through Twitter, right? And then half the time you get upset because there's some horrible, stupid argument happening in the comments with two brain dead idiots. Sorry, I'm <clears throat> a little passionate about this. Mm -hmm. uh, point is that Mastodon is not like this at all. I am a member of... I guess I shouldn't say just so I don't, because I don't want to flood it. That's the yeah. thing is mm -hmm. that Twitter is everyone. But like the instance I'm on is like, I know a couple people like fairly well, you know, there's a couple more popular people who post more often, but like, I just send messages to who I want to. I mm -hmm. comment on their posts and I get to know them a little bit. It's, it's, it's a personal feeling that I have not gotten from any other social media. Yeah. Period. Yeah, and if you're interested in Mastodon, you can look up different, like a list of servers that might have interests that you're in, like into, um, and you can find it there. So, ah! oh! <laughs> <laughs> we have a cat. Cat break. Cat break. Cat break. I don't want to wake up Hermie. Cat break time. Get the cat. Hermie, say hi to the camera. Oh, if I move the camera, it's gonna break. <laughs> Oh, he's unhappy. Oh, he's man. Oh. Is that a good cat break? It's a good cat break. Look at that kitty cat. I want to get my cat in, in oh, picture. Cat too. Look at this butt. This little cutie. Oh, another cat. Yes. Oh, a Hermie boy. Hermie boy. We're just chillaxing. Oh. <laughs> this is a good break. Yes, good cat break. <laughs> Peace. Sneepy oh. kitty. Oh. Hey. Cute. Are you annoyed? I'm sorry. Oh. Okay, I'll set you down. That was a good cat break. Yes, good cat break. Good cat break. Um. So yeah. So anyway, thank you for the cat break. Of course. Cats, this yes. my boy. Hell yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. Thank you, Rogue, for coming to the podcast. Thank you for visiting. Um. Yeah, so, so what uh, were we talking we were about? talking about if you're interested in Mastodon, just look it up, find some communities. Um, yeah, I th our timer went off, but there are a few quick things in this decentralization that we want to talk about. Um, and that let me just I just want to show this off. Instances.social, for instance, uh, is is going to be a great way. There are many different lists. Though. When is Mastodon's sister project Tigrex coming out? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Uh, no, I, I don't see. You know, maybe uh, when Web three actually um, meets its prime, as they they keep talking about, like Web three is gonna, everything's gonna centralize in Web three and then spread back out. Everything will be blockchain. Please, God, don't let it happen. Uh, so we want to get to maybe some other happens. decentralized technologies out there. Yes, a, a couple other things that are really exciting that aren't Web three. Yes, so that are talk arguably more exciting. <laughs> We talked about blockchain. We talked about the social media of Mastodon. Um, there are two other technologies that we want to talk about, and those are torrents and IPFS. So torrents yeah. and IPFS are both focused on distributing content across the network. Torrents specifically um, fragment media and, and um, distribute the fragments. So when you connect to a torrent, you're grabbing multiple fragments and compiling them together, whereas I believe in IPFS, it's actual full si full files that are sent to different nodes of the network, and that's how that's decentralized. Um, and IPFS stands for, is it on the, the screen? I guess it's not. It is. Interplanetary oh, no, not. File System. So yes. it's focused on something that could work in an interplanetary society, uh, which is a really cool concept. But yeah, basically, you flag specific content that you're interested in, and it downloads and saves to your computer. Um, and then other people can connect to your computer and it's like, you know, it's, it's a node on a network, a peer-to-peer -peer network, and then people can find that content by like the nearest neighbors and then they can flag it on theirs to, to keep it on theirs. And that would yeah. work in an interplanetary system. So say we do end up going to Mars in the next, what, I guess we're at 10 years now, maybe. Um, like that. And we've got people there and we've got like a little... Eventually, we'll have some sort of uh, satellite there that has its own network, and then um, there can be nodes on IPFS that exist there, and there can be nodes that exist here. Um, there's that 15-minute delay of com you know communication. Um, we have some nodes saved here. They get saved there, 
and then they're distributed in that right. in that sense. But, yeah. So basically, how it would work, just to break it down, is, say I have a file, and I, it could be an HTML document. It actually be, could be a straight up web page. Mm -hmm. um, I would basically host it on my own machine on IPFS, mm -hmm. and other other places nearby, other IPFS nodes would be able to see it and would be able to host it on their own. You can pin it, and that allows it to stay on their machines as well. Mm -hmm. And the more machines your page is on, the faster it's going to load for someone. So it can take a while for something to show up on IPFS when you first upload it, because no one else is pinning it. Right. It needs to be found. Uh, but this is perfect for this use case of long distances like Mars, yeah. because say Wikipedia, right? You can pin all of Wikipedia to that network on Mars, and you will just have Wikipedia there, ready ready to go. People on Mars can access it. And then if any updates happen to Wikipedia, eventually it's going to end up getting to that node mm -hmm. near Mars, and then you'll have updated Wikipedia. And it goes both ways. So down here on Earth, though, it's also a really fascinating system. Um, Mars is a little far away from us. Mm -hmm. But like right now, you can... Sh this 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 blows my mind. This just blows my mind. You can host a website everywhere. <laughs> For free. For free. Everywhere. Yeah. So it'll be running on your own. You, it'll, you'll have to keep it running on your own IPFS instance. Mm -hmm. But it's not like people are typing in your IP to get to your website that's hosted on your server. Right. It's that they can you can give them the hash basically of your file and they can connect to it and see it. If they like your website, if they would like to host it too, they can pin it. Mm -hmm. And the more people who like your website who want to pin it and make it available to others, the faster it's going to be for other people to find. So it's a true distributed file system that mm -hmm. serves content to people. So like say something is being decensored or, or decensored, something's being censored by a lot of people like, oh, some uh, WikiLeaks leaked something from the FBI again. They're trying to take it down. A, a million people could pin it to their IPFS machines, and anyone could connect to any of them and get that file. And it would have one hash, one single hash that everyone could know that would allow you to get that file. So it would be stupidly easy. Yeah. It's, it's really fascinating. Um, the, what's funny is that they hash the file um, when they put it on the I IPFS nodes. And what that means is that they take your file, they read it, and they basically give it a unique identifier of random letters. What that means is that if somebody else uploads the exact same file, it's not uploaded again. Actually, the same hash is just spit out, and it's like, oh, same hash. Uh, no worries, we don't have to upload it again. We don't have to go through all the work again. You can just do the same hash and get the exact same file. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. there's no like a hundred and a hundred thousand copies of the same image on IPFS, which was really fascinating. Mm -hmm. There is one hash for that exact image. True. Yeah, that is, that is interesting. I mean, obviously it's decentralized, so it's on multiple nodes. Um, right. But right. yeah. Hmm. So you could have the uh, a, a, the gif of Nyan Cat for that old old meme, but still glorious. Uh, a pick of Neon Cat, and you could hash it, and you could just send people like the 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 hash, and they'd be like, "I recognize that hash. I know what that is." You could send people a gif of a Rickroll. I just lost the game. I just lost the Sorry. game. Uh, and they'd be like, "I recognize that. I'm not clicking it. No way." A given if you, you just cut learn off the last. If you give if you cut off the last frame of the video, it's going to be a different hash. But oh, true, just, true. Yeah. Ignore that. Just learn the Rickroll hash. <laughs> yeah. But IPFS is just such cool technology. And that's what I mean by there are more exciting things than Web3 in the decentralized space. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that was your, that was, so we, you had your thesis and then we get to the question, which is below. Is Web3, is Web3 the next the best next web? The next best web. And the answer seems um, like there's a lot more interesting things to be looking at. Yep. That's what I would say. Yeah. So it's probably not the best, the next best web. It's an interesting project. It has okay. some environmental issues with their main technology, but there are some fixes for that that hopefully all of them will take on. And um, I think in the end it has uses, mm -hmm. and it can be used for good or evil. As everything can. 
as, as most things can, yeah. As everything can. And that's yep. it. See, th that's that's the thing. There's, it's overhyped. Yeah. Go check out Mastodon. Check out the Fediverse in general, which I didn't actually get to talking about. Look up the Fediverse. Mastodon is just a it. part of it. I didn't talk about much of it. There oh, are yeah, more yeah, you brought up services yeah, than yeah. Mastodon. Um, and you can actually, you have one account on all of them. Um, you can use one account on Mastodon for all of the Fediverse services. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit like Web3, but better. Anyway, that's my rant. I do have one question about the Fediverse. If, I don't What's know that? if you have the answer, but um, because there are multiple servers, you could create an account on multiple instances, correct? Yes, they would okay. just be different and accounts. Can, they link, can you link them so that you can no. like, f see both threads or content? Well, you, you can... like. Like you it's can have open a source. That could yeah, you can them. get a client. Okay. Like I have a client that just has both of my accounts, and okay. I can just switch between them. Okay. It's called yeah. Tusky on Android, um, similar in name to Mastodon. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great app. So you could make your own client that just combines the feeds of both if okay. you wanted. Yeah, That's cool. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Nice. All right. Nice. That concludes Fantastic. the first segment Ladies of our gentlemen. podcast. Concludes it so hard. <sighs> That was a good ending right there, man. I think so, too. We are moving on to Late Night Sock Talk. This is the Late Night Sock Talk, the only talk with the latest of Night Socks. This is true. Oh, goodness. Are, are, is our frame rate choppy? I think I might want to cut the the overlay that we have. I think, really? Yeah, I think... Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna actually just minimize yeah, that's affecting frame rate. Sorry, the glitch the glitch effect. Oh, that was ruining our frame rate. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Um Late Night Sock Talk. So the, 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 yeah. you, um, you can see the have... new and improved banner below. <laughs> we have vastly improved our technology here. We have invested uh twelve Bitcoin into this banner right mm, here. Yes, twelve Bitcoin. Um mm -hmm. some somebody already had created it, so we just had to buy it. Clearly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And now it's ours and no one else can take it. Okay. So no screenshots are allowed. Okay. Yeah. It's mine. I own it. Unless Comic Sans tells you otherwise, because they are the central source of everything. That's true. I mean, anything decentralized is always centralized to Comic Sans. Yeah. Because they own the majority of the universes. Right. They own 51% of the universe, so they can just kind of say what happens. Yeah change reality it will so unfortunate yeah it is it is i mean we're working on it. We're, we're working on it but that's not important steven it's not we have a very not important thing to talk about the late night sock talk hell yeah we do right right and that is why are cats feet so adorable i have written 12 12 of the papers i wrote in college were on this topic right for my English major, along with my computer science and math minor. Yeah, and tell me, what are the three most prominent nouns in those papers? The three most prominent nouns are obviously toes, patella, and cosmological. I couldn't agree more. If I were to write 12 papers, those would be the, the top three words. I make in like sure the Instagram. to... I make sure to fill the top half of the first page with just those words. Mm -hmm. uh, making my, ma you know, putting a couple prepositions in there to make it somewhat readable. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it really gets my point across really well when I, when, when like, I get into a flow, I just let those words, let those ah, words fly. Just and fill I, I put my spirit into it. Oh, yeah. That's what it is. Do you use white text so you can't actually see it? But then, like, on the internet, that's what comes up as results when you search those things? Well, absolutely. Oh, yeah, um, I, I prefer to use um, transparent text. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, transparent text. Yeah, transparent uh, text. Yeah. Along I, I with don't your know. transparent I, water bottle. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're fundamentally the same thing. I mean, basically, you just pour this on the page, and then it's done. Exactly, right. All you need to do, I mean, you just need the right H2O to USB converter. Yeah. Uh, and you just pour it right in there, and uh, it... it, it like I can, I can't see the text when I write it. I don't know if I'm making typos. I'm glad Word has the red squiggly ah, lines. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. So then you just backspace the whole word and retype it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I, I just don't know. Um, but yeah, the cosmological properties of cat's feet 
blow my mind every single minute of every single day of every single week. Well, you know what's interesting about that? I what? think their feet are the primary source of causing their um, solid versus liquid state transform. Oh, really? Yeah. I think sure about it's that. just springy, you know, like people would be like, uh -huh. oh, it's the fur, they're squeezing, and they're wiggly, or it's their, like, the way their spine is structured, but no, I think it's the feet. The mm -hmm. feet, it just, it's just a small portion, but it, it tells you everything, right? Their feet, what? like, you notice how when they're laying down, all four of their feet are touching each other? And yeah, they absolutely. Around, right? they like, just... Yeah, it's, yeah. I think, you know, that is, that is a primary point, it's like, they're liquid. Their feet just... <laughs> together they form into one unit exactly a lot of the time yeah um you know i have actually like i can prove to you that they are liquid like i have drunk a cat before oh i have not experienced this but if you get a spoon it has to be a real not a spoon uh, a straw if you get a really right. long straw it has mm -hmm. to be long enough that you don't like scare them and disturb them because they have to be asleep right so you have to be That's... four feet away right exactly yeah exactly four feet away yeah. no closer no farther yeah um <clears throat> they are only in their fully liquid state when they are asleep mm -hmm. in deep REM sleep. Yeah. So if you can get that straw, line it up and just, you can get a nice mouth full of cat juice. Okay. Mm -hmm. And don't ask me how it tastes. Just uh, don't. Don't? Okay. Does it, your second word was patella. Does that have anything to do with that? Um, <clears throat> yeah, um, that was one of the topics that I wrote a lot about in the paper. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be published. Um, it was my PhD thesis. Um, <clears throat> this is my thesis paper about the patella and how it ruins the entire flavor of the drink. Mm. It's such a shame. You know, if they didn't have that gross, sour patella, it would be a delicious beverage. You know, we could get rid of the raging overpopulation of cats by just consuming them. But no. No, of course, they have to have these disgusting patellas. Like, tell me, have you tasted your patella? I I'm, know I'm, you have. Like, how does it taste? Why are you assuming I've done this? What? I have. Uh, speak you have for it? yourself, my guy. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. I just, like, I thought that... I mean, that's just, like, a normal... That's just part of your, like, exploration of your own body, you know? I haven't gotten I, to that level what, yet. I'm still like a couple levels behind at the, the really the, yeah the petunia. What level are you? Oh, you're at the petunia level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's like three levels behind patella. Oh, dude, I'm at the acapella level. Oh, that's 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 a very nice one. I I was looking at the list and I was like, ooh, or I guess it's not a list. It's a it's a branching tree structure. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. How to explain? Yeah, it. you you should. I mean, but you're like up here on the tree though. Like you're yeah. older than me. You should you should get on that. What what's I've, your next thing? I've been, I mean, I'm exploring the left side of the tree more. Um, oh, okay, you know, okay, the yeah, Left yeah. brain topics, and the right brain is a little bit different. But yeah, the next uh, next thing on the, the, uh, the farthest next thing, or like the next lowest thing? The next thing you're looking at um, Okay, yeah, exploring. yeah. Um, the next thing I was looking at exploring is um, aglets, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where are those on the body? Are they inside? Um, I think I didn't go down they're that in your toes. Oh, damn. Yeah. So you so have feet stuff. Feet stuff. Yeah, you have to nibble a little bit. Um, you can you can expose the aglets. Um, you can you can purchase external aglets um, too. Is that is that other people's aglets? Uh, no, no. External oh. versus internal aglets. Internal is inside oh, of your oh, body. Oh. External is like a fabricated thing um, oh, that you okay. put on your feet, um, uh -huh, uh -huh, or uh -huh. you can stab. But yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Um, what are the legal ramifications of that kind of adventure? Because I, you know, I, I've heard of some sus things. You know, they have to, you. Have, you should buy aglets with Bitcoin if you're going to get external ones. Right, and then you need to go to Texas and make sure you are in a private residency um, mm -hmm. before you do any sort of exploration. Otherwise, there will be cameras watching you, and mm -hmm. Comic Sans will know. So, oh, damn. but Comic Sans refuses to watch specific private residencies in Texas until 2023, when oh. in the timeline they'll actually uh -huh. realize that Texas was a loophole. Oh man, we gotta get. So it's a rush. We actually yeah. have to. So we need to get down this branching tree. We do. We fast. do. Yeah. Dang. 
I don't and know. Then if we can I'm decentralize gonna... our knowledge and <sighs> spread it to other people. That's fascinating. We should put it on IPFS. Just yeah. Throw it up there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. The anti comic sans IPFS. The anti. I'm not going to come up with an acronym. That's what I'm not going to do. <laughs> the a, the ACIPFS. <laughs> ACIPFS. 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 This decentralized network will only exist in universes not contaminated by Comic Sans. Thank the you. The only way we can ensure its validity. That, that, you know, that makes a lot of sense. You know, it's funny. I actually walked in. I might be in a... I might be in a pocket of this dimension that has been influenced by comic sans uh because oh. i have actually walked into a texas private residency just casually you know walking around the neighborhood here in maryland i happened to walk into a texas residence and they i saw them going for their feet and they jumped away and suddenly i was surrounded by cameras um oh. and uh they turned into humanoid creatures and started beating the shit out of me um Oh. For some reason, I couldn't feel anything. I could only feel the horror of the situation, but no pain. And suddenly, when I when I woke up uh, from the beating, I was back in Maryland. So I just assumed that that was. I just drank too many. I just drank too many cups of coffee that day. I was just a little hyperactive, um, and I thought you know, Comic Sans just happened to send me back. But it sounds like they're actually they're not there. Am I correct in saying that? Like they shouldn't have been there. And that, friends, is the end of our segment. Um, we're not going to talk about that because legal reasons. Um, so we're going to actually move on to the next segment of our podcast. Um, so, yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Hell yeah, we oh, are. Yeah. You know wait. what it is? Uh, wait, can you remind me? I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <gasps> oh. sorry. Oh, oh. oh sorry. I can't read barcodes. Uh, is that oh, like the sorry. universe? Okay, okay. I think I see an oh, apostrophe. Sorry. Um. Oh shit! Sorry. Okay. Oh. Oh. What is it? Wait. What's your? I world? can't read. What does it say? It says, "What's what? your world?" I'm confused. <laughs> I just realized what? that both of our videos are 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 swapped. You're ba- You're correct, and I'm backwards. Yeah, on stream. Uh, because the source is the same source, so it flips them both. Just learn that. Uh, anyways, what's your world is the topic. I wonder what those glyphs say right here. I don't, I don't really know. I mean, the price of blockchain. Wow, that is really on point today. Oh, hmm. Wow, look at that. I could be wrong, given I can't read. Right, right. But we can explore ideas. Yes, we can That's without reading. Important. Thank God. Now, Stephen. Yeah, what is it, Christian? Uh, do you remember whose world was uh, first last time? I guess we can find oh, out. Last time. Oh! oh my God! It looks like mine was first last it time. It looks like you're right. That was the mortal god. That was the mortal turned god who conquered a world. Yeah, that was mine. And then Christian's was uh, was conscious flames spreading their tragically limited understanding. That was a deep one. Ooh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it sounds like it's actually your turn to explain this world without any words, please. I again, I can't read. Oh. I'll use no visual words. Thank you, thank mm-hmm. you. So, Christian. Yes, Stephen. Let me just lay this out for you okay. using ten minutes of dialogue to okay. ask you a very okay. simple question. Yes, please. Of course. What is your world? That was so quick. Wait, did ten minutes just go by? Yeah, that was ten. Oh, you, damn. All right, I. You, you must have zoned out or something. Yeah. Okay. That was, uh, I just got the last like sentence of what you just said, and it was oh, what's sure. your world? Okay, so uh, that, that and be... that's the important part. Okay, cool, great. But please, please, please. Okay, Stephen. Yes. My world is a world of jelly donuts. All right. We got jelly donuts, except these jelly donuts are cut in half and they're scaled up so that you can jump into the jelly like a swimming pool. All right. We got different kinds of jelly donuts. We got your normal 
um, like strawberry jam, jelly, jelly donuts. We got your um, Boston cream. You can jump into this nice thick cream and just consume Whoa. it. The cream. Oh my goodness. You can, oh. there are obscure donuts though, right? So you got like these metallic donuts with, with um, water in them. So it's like a real pool. But it looks no like way. a donut cut in half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's delicious. It is delicious. And there are donuts made with spikes and thorns and sap as their <gasps> filling. These donuts are interspersed in three-dimensional space at different angles. There is no gravity except for around the donuts. So when you're on a donut, you will land on the donut. You can jump off the donut, be released from its gravity, and enter another donut's Sphere of influence, or should I say, Taurus of influence, because these are donuts, my friends, and Tauruses are important. You, you. Oh yeah, and oh these donuts are all slowly kind of twisting and spiraling around each other, and it's just, it, um, um, it's mystical to the eye to just observe, lay back on your floaty, in your donut pool. Sipping whatever choice of filling you're surrounded with. It could be cat filling, my friends. Oh, shit. Like with cat. Oh, and yeah. just observe the beauty of Tauruses spinning around you. In this world, you are never the center of the world. You are always rotating around a fixed point that you have to look for. But these fixed points are many. It is not a single fixed point. You will find yourself at one point rotating and, and pivoting around one point and then around another and then around another. And these points have a very significant um, impact on this world. Really? How yeah. so? So these points actually determine your emotional state. <laughs> what? Yes. These points are, are spread throughout in uh, patterns, not unlike stars of, the, of our universe. And they follow them in like a constellation-like pattern. And it takes millennia to get back to the beginning of the pattern. So people are still trying to figure out how exactly the current fixed point is determining the current mood. But they do know some of the subsets of patterns that exist in these fixed point rotations. And Steven, this donut verse is my world. I got lost in there for a minute. Did you get lost I, in the sauce of a donut? I got, I, not only did I bathe in cat, in cat fluids, but I got dizzy imagining the infinite array of donuts spinning around mm. in my vision, as I myself spawn as well. Ah, yes. And it was like the most magical roller coaster I've ever been on. You, I couldn't have said it better myself. And that fixed point that you were rotating around was instilling that exact thought in your brain. Whoa. Damn. Yep. I'd like to travel around that universe. Oh yeah, just jump from donut to donut. Find that, find that perfect donut. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, Stephen. I yes. have a very important question for you. Make sure nobody's watching you when you answer this question because I want to make sure it's genuine and not influenced by others. What is it, Christian? The question I must say very, very sensually, my friends. What is it? The question is, what is your world? <laughs> You want to know what my world is? I do. I do. Want to know. <laughs> well, friend, come on in. Oh, the weather's nice. Yeah. Now release all of your commitment to your corporeal form. Lay back. Your body is gone. What is sensation? when you really think about it. 
Just the stimulation of some neurons. What are you in the end? You a spirit? That's exactly what you are in this world, if you can call it that. Take a look around you and you see vast plains, similar to the Midwest, similar to some farmland you've seen in the past. Look behind you, you see space stretching out into infinity. Look below you, and it's been split in two. The grass starts right here, moves off to the right. Space starts here, moves off to the left. You look down and up, infinite space in both directions, beautiful grassy farmland to the side. In my world, your own essence, your own invisible, your own special unique vibe is imprinted into your reality. Wow. The essence of what you believe you are constructs the reality you experience. Not with traditional sensations or vision, hearing, necessarily. When you look in that direction, you're not looking with your eyes. You're looking with your heart. Every emotion you felt as a child looking out the window as you drive along alongside a farm and you thought of running through that field and how far the hills go, they fall up and down, it seems like forever. The feelings of seeing cows and maybe it feels very familiar to some people. Maybe they grew up on farm, maybe they're living on them. And to some people it seems so foreign, these large animals walking around. All of those feelings, conjure them up. Picture it. Zoom in on the cow. Zoom in to the infinite extending space of that field. And understand that this is part of who you are as a person. Those experiences you had can't quite be put into words. Look in the other direction and you see infinite space. When you were seven, eight, ten, you look up at the stars and you think, what is this? Where are we right now? How is this real? Half the time nowadays, you just ignore them. It's just normal. But think about a moment in your life when you've looked up, maybe it's very low light pollution, and you were just mesmerized, blown away by the presence of all those stars. The infinite world that we are not privy to we can see from a distance. All those feelings of wonder and splendor, they become part of you and they construct the space around you, what you can sense. Let's say you're a web developer and you just got done adding a uh, a Bitcoin pay now button to your website. You step through the doorway and you see hellfire everywhere. It's beautiful. You love it. You take in the smells. You see the world burning around you. And you just sit back. You suddenly have a pina colada in your hands. And you take a long sip. You light your cigar on a flame burning beside you. This is the life. So my world, something that constructs your own core memories, your own, the vibes that you've forgotten from your childhood into your own perceivable reality. Wow. That's my world. That is like a roller coaster times a million. It'll break you. I don't It'll think I you. can comprehend your world. I think your words are, like, perfect. Yet, they get to me, and I'm only perceiving, like, half of them. I'm only, I'm only comprehending half of them the way that, you, that 
you can experience it. I just have to go there. I'm just gonna have to go there. It's it's something you just have to experience for yourself. I believe you. And with that, I have to apologize to everyone who who likes Bitcoin. Real quick, sorry. <laughs> That was a joke. <laughs> What's your world is a joke? Oh wait, no it's not. It's not. It's It's really not. Creating universes is it what is it creating is. Creating universes. And there are jokes made in universes. This is true. Like the one If up our on universe screen. isn't a, if our universe isn't a joke, I don't know what is. <laughs> if Comic Sans wasn't a joke, I don't know what anything would be. Is that right? Is It'd that so much right? Worse. Imagine if Comic Sans wasn't a joke. <laughs> Google, Google. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that was our podcast. All right, thank you for coming to Podcast with <sighs> an 11. Oh, wait, I mean a K. Um, or 75. Or 75, or 107. Uh, any of those. Oh, and thank we you for joining back us. Back in action. We're back. And it's hopefully, been so long. next time in approximately two weeks, we will have this available to the public. Hell yeah! And we will be back again with another episode, trying to bring it back into action. We can talk about the the reels and the reels, if you know what I mean. Oh boy! <laughs> so exciting! I oh. love it. Maybe we'll have Luna on the podcast next week. We haven't talked to her in a long time. You're right. I have. I actually haven't either. Just personally, you know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Me too. I don't know what's going on with her these days. Gotta catch up. Find out which Mastodon instance she's uh, accessing. Yeah. Right. right? Uh, by the way, Luna is uh, the AI that Christian created. Yes, and yeah. Luna net has most recently used GPT three to communicate. Prior, it was a different algorithm. Um, uh -huh. We'll see what happens next. Just become much more fluent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Much. yeah. True. It's been great. Um... <laughs> yeah. Duncan, now uh, Rayora down out there has one too. He one, has a book wait, as well. what are we talking about? Doesn't he have oh, a book? A book, yes. Yes, he, yes, does. he does. Random Just to get you a little bit more done, jealous. We are talking to you. you yes, we in are. in the future, in 2050, who are somehow accessing this content on some distribution platform, whether... <laughs> I love that that screen is, uh, is disappearing. Whether or not it's YouTube or some... Or IPFS. Maybe we'll start hosting these on IPFS. Who knows? Um, and... Um, Peer tube. Peer... You're right. But if it's decentralized, we could do both. Um... Yeah get the book maybe we'll have a pdf version in the future oh, yeah, gotta great. incentivize you to get the physical copy first though that's um, true it's actually so nice it's just like it a good feeling book it is it is it's pretty in solid. general yeah but thank random you no random viewer in 2050 for watching this video for whatever thank reason you, you decided much. you made it to the end or you saw some sort of analytic that said this was the most interesting part to watch and so you're doing it <laughs> Uh, or your friend recommended it to you because for some reason they know anything about this. Um, so yeah, good on them. You. Good on. I them. love them. We both love them. And send us your worlds if you have any worlds you would like us to yes. perceive with our little feeler eyeballs and brains and mouth. We like to lick and kind of chew and and slurp and just generally suck on your ideas and your worlds. So please let us suck on them. That was please. a good world. Please. I won't tell you about that one. No? No. Next time. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Understandable. I won't ask. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Rayora. Thank you, Rogue, for hanging yes, out. Yes. Thank you, live Appreciate viewers, it. for coming. Yes. That's always fun. Rayora so says, hi, you. 2050 person. Hope your day is going well. Yeah, hello, 2050 person. How's it going? I hope this survived on IPFS or PeerTube or whatever. Or YouTube, if uh, YouTube is probably. somehow still around then. We'll see. I hope not. <laughs> I, hope not. I hope it's replaced. Yeah, really sure. do. Yeah. We'll have a, um, we'll have a, so, a link redirect. <laughs> the, so let the us YouTube know. YouTube hash. 
to IPFS and Outrash. <laughs> I don't know. That would be an interesting service to provide. What? You take, like, the little hash that, like, the ID video ID in YouTube, and then oh. you map it to a decentralized link. Oh. You could have a file on IPFS yes. that maps it mm -hmm. that maps it from YouTube to IPFS. Like a simple, like, JSON or something, you know? Yeah. yeah. The only problem is updating it. Yeah. Because there'd be a different hash every time you'd have to get the latest. True. You could link to it on a on a web page yeah. that you upload. Yeah. And that web page is centralized to like with a K or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, this is the end of our podcast. We are going yes. to sign out. We will see you in the next one if you decide Thank to come. Much. Or in the past one if you decided to go in the timeline backwards for whatever yeah, reason. Yeah, future person, if you're if you're uh, if you're here if you'd like to chat now or in a future near future podcast we would really appreciate knowing if youtube dies yeah um we would appreciate knowing that this is true uh, if it's replaced by a better platform that doesn't suck so much yeah that'd be great uh so let us know uh and thank you everyone who's in our present time yes we value you very yes. much thank you have a good one guys you mean have a um a good one Guys? Have um a uh, um a uh, good um, um one yeah okay um um um, um.